to those wondering if this guy was a Muslim, this guy, I mean me, get down into my channel and then check for some three videos which will be about my exchange year in America here. And I will be there preaching Islam to people. I don't know a lot of people who have confidence to, you know, explain a religion to people in public. And they'll be like, can we video you? And then you get videoed. But people think for some reason, because I made Christian videos, I was a fraud. I was... I was just a Christian missionary, he's a freaking liar, and just getting crazy in my comments. Go down and see those videos. If you're a Muslim and you think I was a fraud, go and see those videos and ask yourself if you have ever done something like that as a Muslim to, to spread the truth around or whatever you think is the truth. As long as somebody is not doing anything bad to me, why should God tell me to hate that person? Is God okay? Other people lying? I think these are just a few reasons that you should always take your time when you hear about something. From my last video, I had so many... I, I That was too much chaos. But as long as people can interpret the Quran to justify anything they want, to justify raping and to justify 9-11 uh, and, you know, all those things. It's the same way people can try to interpret the Bible to do the same things. And if you are listening to this and you don't take your time and then you listen to one side and think you are done, that is too political and you might be completely wrong. You might not be aware. But you get listening to one side and thinking, yeah, I'm done. Because what I'm saying in my comment is that you guys are not, well, not all of you, but most of you are not there to say, learn or explain things to your Muslim friends. You are just there to say that, yes, Islam is from the evil. That's not the reason I started the, this YouTube channel. Not at all. If you think Islam is the evil and Christianity is the best, or Christianity is the evil and Islam is the best, I'm not sure if this channel is for you. You might want to shift somewhere else. I need subscribers, but I don't really care if you are somebody who is who is a hater. No, I don't. I don't want haters in my channel. So that's the thing. From my last video about uh, uh, David Wu talking about Muhammad being racist, there was a reason I didn't talk about the story of Zaid and Bilal. And I've seen you guys just proved to me, hey, yeah, we don't, we don't even want to hear what you want to say. But it's okay. So today I'm making a counter video about the stories of African people that I know and how they live with the Prophet. Just two of them and then we'll see. And you the Christians, you just take your time and then listen. Let's have a healthy conversation. What is it that is the problem that is making it separate? Do we have to be like, does the Muslims have to go to hell for the Christians to go to heaven? Or does the Christians have to go to hell for the Muslim to go to heaven? It is not political parties, right? Bro, this is about God. You know, I got those emails and I got all those messages. I'm trying to respond to all of them. But the thing is that I'm not trying to stay any bad thing. I'm trying to uh, bring Christians and Muslims together. You know, if we can get together and speak and then we have healthy conversation. I've had Christian friends and I'm a Muslim and we had no problems. But on YouTube, all that you see is that you see channels talking about Christianity, Christianity, and then they are promoting Christianity, and that's the one thing only that they are doing. And sometimes they tell lies, and especially when they're interpreting the Quran, well, it's, the something is in Arabic. The Arabic language has over 12 million words, and the English language has barely 6,000 words that are used. How do you convert from 12 million to 6,000? And then you try to make exact sense out of it, and then you, there might not be, I don't know, man, but whatever. So I, I, I thought I just would, I would start to learn the Arabic. But the thing I would say before we start watching this video uh, is that uh, let's not let's not be too hard on each other. Let's try to uh, put our best self out there, and then we learn and not think that the the Muslims are so stupid or the Christians are so stupid. Uh, I, I think we are all not stupid. It's just that we need to see what we are looking for from the same angle, and that will end the game. All right. All right, so before anything, let's see this video now. So it is a, a video, the story of Zaid bin Harith, who was a... I'll always give you a background story a little bit if I know. Uh, Zaid bin Harith was a, a, a slave who the Prophet adopted as his son. And he was an, a slave of an African descent. So if you listen to this and then you compare it to David Wood's um, claims of Prophet Muhammad being racist. Of course, David Wood does not understand Arabic, so you guys should know that. And if I had taught 
what he's saying is stupid then i will not even put it on there i just want to hear what does the christians think about me you know let's have a conversation and this one is from the muslim side it's a story so let's say it really quick before any do we understand the, the, the equality of justice that Islam preaches? We allow our Arab, Pakistani, Indian, wealthy, national downplay other Muslims because of their color. But we are a bunch of hypocrites. That's why these non-Muslims got a misunderstanding of Islam. Because we propagate this bunch of Indian, Middle Eastern Islam. Someone by the name of Zaid Ibn Haritha. Zaid ibn Haritha was a slave and got a long history behind him. Maybe Allah permits us in another khutbah we'll talk about him. I want to just touch the little story on Bilal radiallahu ta'ala. But I want to share this with you. Zaid ibn Haritha was a slave, a black slave. And what did the Prophet sallallahu did to him? He adopted him as his own son. And he said, if I die before Zaid, he will inherit from me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. And he said, if he dies before me, I will inherit from him. But Zaid didn't have nothing financially and physically. But the Prophet ﷺ was announcing to the Arabs, uh, don't let no color, race, and superiority place here. I have adopted him as my son. So much so that do you know what he was called? What was Zaid called? After that statement, he was called Zaid ibn Muhammad. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that there is nothing like adoption and an adopted child, whatever we'll explain, should carry the name of their real biological father. And that's how they did not carry that name publicly after that because if you in Islam you can be a foster parent you can bring someone to live with you as your son or your daughter but you cannot make them your adopted in the sense that if they pay their parents want them back you say not at all that child carries my name that's my child if the parents come back for that child you got to set them free to go it doesn't matter what you spent and what you did because many years after the parents of Zaid ibn Haritha were looking for him. And they finally found him to cut a long story short. And approached the Prophet wasallam for him. And the Prophet wasallam, Zaid, here is your parents. Your choice is to go. And Zaid told his parents, I know you love me and you miss me and you care for me. Because they were longing and dying for their son Zaid. But Zaid said, the fatherly love the affection, the care. This is a black slave. Slave one, black slave. Some Mufassidi Muhaddithin have said he was not only black, but he wasn't that appreciated to look at. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm not, I am not criticizing, I'm telling you how far they went. Because you know nowadays, people look at black and beauty and ugly and make justification. And our Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one of the most, the most handsome man that ever walked on earth. The Rasul of Allah. The Imam of the Prophets. The leader of the leaders. He had no shame, no disgrace, nothing to be afraid of, but accepted a black slave to be his son to live in his house. Allahu Akbar. That's the Islam. Which one of our Middle Eastern, Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Egyptian, so-called Muslims could do that? We only talk Islam. But we are a bunch of hypocrites when it comes to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not talking race. I'm talking Quran and Sunnah here. Because we want to kill the devil. To even rub it in further, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got this side. Ibn Haritha married to one of the most beautiful women of the time called Zainab come on man we'll talk about him in another khutbah you see that's why before I begin my khutbah I always ask Allah give me the quality of tawakkal Allah let me put my trust in you because if I have to put my trust in people I'll be scared and I won't say these things 
Because if Darululum had an Indian Shuraba, they would say, Brother, Assalamu Alaikum, get out from here. That kind of talk we ain't want here. Because this place is going to be flooded with Africans tomorrow. But I say, Mashallah, that's the love of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Son, eh? this is not talk. His son. Imams brainwash some of us. We come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbas, we don't get the message, that's why we miss it. All I need you to be grateful, Allah. Are you telling me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not protect the, the prestige of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Only living for business. That's all our dream. Let me see who shall save you now. Yo, did you guys hear that? What do you think about that in contrast of Wood's interpretation of the Quran, David Wood, I mean? And sometimes too, I hear people say, oh, the prophet uh, took his married his adopted son's wife or did he take him the wife from him i don't know something along those lines and it was that's Zay that people usually talk about you know and maybe i could give you a background story on that and to my christian brother my christian brothers you this will be probably more important to you guys so you when you have a uh, when you have a, a conversation with your muslim brothers it will be easy to piece things out so the if somebody tried to tell you the prophet Muhammad uh took his adopted son's wife the question is well how did they even start you know he adopted the son and he requested the wife for Zaid and when they even went to talk the parents were like ah who well first time they went and then they were asking for the lady's hand they thought it was the prophet himself and they were so much in hurry to send their daughter out and came out, but they realized it was Zaid. And the parents of the daughter didn't want to do it again. But because of the obedience to Allah and to the Prophet, they did it anyway, and Zaid had a wife. So if you always hear about the end, you know, try to hear about the beginning, how did it begin? You know, if he had wanted to marry that girl, well, why not? Of course, yes, as those parents, they were already willing to give the girl to him. But he said, no, not me, to say it. You know, these are some of the things that we need to always know. So now you know this, what, what do you think? Oh, is, are these guys lying? Is David Wood lying? You know, I don't mean like one of them has to be wrong, but one of them might misinterpret something. Let me know what you guys think about this. Oh, and I, actually, I want to forget. And this is just one story. So you, you realize I'm not using the, the word black. I don't know. I don't like to use that word black. You know, as, because if I look at myself now, I don't, I don't look black, but they call me black. So whenever I can, I try not to use the word black. Why? Because I don't, I don't want to. It causes so much, so many things that I don't like. And yeah, so this video is of, let's see Bilal's video, uh, the video or the story of Bilal, who was a, an African slave too. His mom was an Abyssinian prince and his father was uh, an Arab, but yeah, he, they were slaves. And then, well, you will see it if you see the video and then I'll tell you what about thing. And after that video, I will tell, I'll try to answer some other questions I saw in my comments in the last video people were asking.